Evening folks, Ryan here, as promised, going to show you how to tie Tug Dealer's Crawling Stone. Uh, got a size 8 caddis curve here with a 5 30 seconds bead. And we're going to start by laying a little bit of thread here right at the front of the hook. You'll see why that's important in about two seconds. folks just caught my finger on a size 22 kind of stung a bit so we're going to start by tying in just our uh, goose bites here uh, just your just typical these ones are green um, take two little ones off the tip because we're going to use those as our front antenna they're a little softer from the top there oh, didn't get that one laid beside properly Tie those down in the front. Quick whip finish, just a three turn. We just need to hold the thread down. There's going to be so much tied on top of that, we don't have to worry about it too much. And we'll cut our thread off. Bring our bead up over top of those thread wraps. Put our thread back on here behind. I'm going to tie about two thirds of the way down the shank. I'm going to stop there, so right here, and we'll grab ourselves a little bit of lead, or in this case, no lead, a little weight wire. I'm going to fold it in half, so I've got the two pieces there, of course, doubled over. I'm going to take this, we're going to lift that bead up a little bit, and we're going to bury that inside. Now we're going to tie that down. Doesn't have to be pretty, just has to be tied down. And then we're going to pull the lead over again, keeping all of this lead right on top of the hook. That's crucial. And we're going to do three layers like that, back and forth, about the halfway point, three fifths of the uh, the shank. And then we're just going to tie that down. It's crucial we keep that lead all on top of the hook like that because, as I mentioned, this is the crawling stone, so it's going to ride hook up when it's done. Uh, and come right to the back here. And now we're going to come just about to the bend of the hook, just about where it comes back out to the point. We're just going to take a little touch of fluorescent orange. Again, just a little bit of the fluorescent orange dubbing. Tie a thick little rope here, about two, three centimeters if that. And we're going to make a little ball right here at the back. Just going to wrap it right down on top of itself. And we're going to grab our goose bite again. Grab two off the other end. I want a little bit bigger ones for this. Match them up here. Now, some guys say that they'll get fish rejecting the fly because of the hard bites at the back. I have never come across that. I put this fly to work yesterday uh, with great success. Uh, this has actually been the most productive fly I've fished in the past two years and uh, not just in my hands but I've had other people fishing it with great success as well. Um, this is my go-to nymph pattern uh, particularly for the stone nymph but I do tie a similar variation for some other nymphs as well. Uh, we'll tie those another time though. So we're gonna lock that down Grab a little bit of our copper wire. Now I'm tying this a lot slower than I normally would because, well, making a video would be kind of hard to tie it as quick as I can. 
and still have people following along. So a little bit of copper wire, just the, your fine copper, tie that in. I like to make sure that I sink everything down on this. The fly does take a fair bit to tie, so I don't want it falling apart. Now I'm gonna get my thread out of the way. I'm gonna flip that fly upside down now, or the hook upside down, and I'm gonna grab hold of my silver tip flies, stone nymph backs, These are a fantastic product, silver tip flies. I tie a ridiculous number of flies um, with these. Check out their website, silvertipflies.com. Um, Brent on a free checks, the owner of the company, and he does some phenomenal products. Uh, on top of these stone fly nymph backs, or stone nymph backs, I guess. He also does uh, mayfly wings, caddis wings, stone nymph wings for the adults, uh, hopper wings, just phenomenal product. Um, I'll tie out one of the dry flies and put a video up here soon. It's never been easier. I don't think I've tied a feather wing in two years but these because of these wings. So I tied that on the underside of the hook. And we're gonna tie that in here in a little bit. All right, so now I'm using some dubbing. Uh, this is a mixed blend of uh, like an ice peacock and a golden stone. Uh, the golden stone in this case is actually the UV golden stone from uh, totally blanking now. Considering it's what I tie with, it's pretty bad. Uh, Spirit Rivers UV2, their uh, their CLX golden stone. And then it's just a, a hairline or a super fly ice peacock. I find that they're pretty much the same, especially when you're building this blend. And we're just going to layer a nice thick body, get a relatively tight wrap on it there. Um, doesn't have to be too terribly tight though, because we're going to do a little manicuring to this when we're all said and done. One of the things that makes this fly as durable as it is, is uh, some of the care you give it after you've done tying it. A little moisture on my fingers here. And we're going to come just about two thirds of the way up this hook. You see we're covering everything up nicely. For the newer tires out there, the beginner tires, you're dubbing. If you're fighting with it a lot, remember, always spin the same way. Don't go back and forth. It won't uh, won't bind to your tying thread properly for you. So again, nice tight rope. I'm gonna lock that down. Now I'm gonna pull this back over. I'm gonna turn this sideways a bit so you guys can see this. I'm going to tie in right before the first wing shuck there. Make sure that I'm pulling tight. Make sure that's riding straight upside down. Now I'm going to grab this red wire and I'm actually going to reverse wrap this. And as I do, I'm going to pass it through the dark lines on the nymph body. And if you pick up some of these nymph backs, you'll see those. And yeah, they're photorealistic nymph bodies. Brent put a lot of time and effort into designing this product and uh, did a phenomenal job. I use his nymph bodies on probably a dozen different nymph patterns uh, for different species. I'm just going to trim up some of the long fibers from that Spirit River stuff. It's a pretty long fiber dubbing. Um, and I didn't feel like... Uh, chopping it all up before we started so losing the odd straggler piece there here and there yeah so that's the mix color I produce with it it's got the black and the golden stone in there together I find just the straight golden stone produces a little too light of a fly for me and uh, and doesn't produce as well black is a little too dark um, especially when your water starts getting a little clearer 
So I use a little of both. And now I'm going to spin just a little tiny bit of dubbing on here. A lot of steps to this fly, but it produces and it lasts a long time. I, uh, I lost one yesterday. I was pretty sad about it. The, that single fly had caught me well over 30 fish and, uh, and, and still looked like new. I uh, had a big slob of a rainbow break me off here in one of our gorgeous southern Alberta rivers that's fishing exceptionally well in the early season. Now I've got just some uh, Superfly round rubber. This is in the uh, the barred chartreuse. The rest of them in my hand here. So you only need about an inch or so per side. And I can flip this back over for this part because I want to tie these on so that the legs basically are they're on the side of the fly but they're angled towards what would be the top of the hook if it was fishing normally lock those down nice and tight grab a little more of my dubbing here careful it's not stuck to your fingers when you do that the stuff tastes terrible <laughs> build a nice big rope here because we're going to do some fairly heavy dubbing. And you'll see me kind of X through the legs. I want to bury that connection really well and I want to have a little excess dubbing in there. I'm going to flip it back over. Now here's the really cool part about uh, these nymph bodies. So I'm going to lay it down, take my bodkin, put it in there, and I'm going to pull it back over itself. And you'll see Brent's done a great job of separating the wing shucks. So I'm going to tie in between the second and the third if you're looking at it from the front of the body. I'm going to lock that down. I need one more little pinch of the dubbing here. I put a little bit of dubbing in between each of the wig shucks. It gives them some nice separation, um, great profile on the water. Not everybody will do that. Some people will just build the wing shucks and call it a day like that. But I think that's one of the things that sets this fly apart is the fact that it gives a very realistic profile. Now I'm going to fold over. Sections one and two move right to the front of the fly. Now I'm going to lock that head down. Nice and tight. Oh, got a leg there. Finally, one more little t touch of the dubbing just to put a collar right in behind the bead. Make sure your antenna are up out of the way. You don't wrap over your legs. Tie over top of that dubbing a little bit to pin it down. And we're going to whip finish. Cinch that down. One more three wrap just for good measure. I like to use uh, Fish Pimps hard headed on my nymphs. It's a water based head cement or tying cement. And uh, it penetrates really nice, doesn't leave any of that glossy sheen. Um, it soaks in real nice. So even if you've done a really tight to the bead head like this, you know that it's going to penetrate really well. And now if you remember, I did a little bit of dubbing in between each of those wing shucks. And the reason for that is right here. I'm going to stick my scissors in. 
Actually, I'll show you this before I do this. You can see the little ballooned wing shucks there. Kind of looped, you can see through them there in the image. I'm gonna slide my scissors in there and I'm gonna cut along the image so that the wing shucks produce the right shape and the, you can't miss it. Like I said, it's photorealistic for the body, so the, the shape and design of the wing shuck is exactly as it should be. There's a little space left in between each one and I just cut that out because that's a tie-in spot but with this fly I double it over and I don't tie in on that particular groove. Oh, just missed it. I'm just going to turn it to myself here so I can see what I'm doing. Now I always pull my legs back, make sure they don't come past the end of the hook because I don't, it drives me nuts when my legs fold in on themselves. Same thing with the front. And there you have it. Tug Dealer's Crawling Stone, and I'll just uh, set that here. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, it fishes deep. I usually fish this at the bottom of a two or three nymph rig. As in Alberta, we're allowed to fish three. And uh, fish is like a dream. Nine out of ten times, that's the fly they'll take. If you've got multiple, uh, multiple flies on there. Hope you enjoyed. Tie away. Tight lines, remember, tugs the drug.